Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. What a joy to meet you today. And I want to tell you, this is truly the moment that God is about to touch your life. Uh, whatever the situation you're going through, whatever the answer that you're expecting from God, I tell you, today He will meet you at the point of your need. And if you're watching it every week, I'm so glad that you're connecting with us. Uh, thank you for everyone who's writing to us to tell us how this program has been a blessing to you. It means a lot to me. And those of you who are connecting for the first time, a big welcome to you. God bless you. I know today will bring a beautiful blessing into your life. I want to talk to you on how to prevail in prayer. Prayer or learning the language of prevailing in prayer is actually learning to win over impossible situations. Prayer is such a weapon, a tool, if I may call, that God has ordained that we can use it the right way and have amazing results. There cannot be a situation that is standing on your way of progress and staring at you if you would only learn not just to pray, but to prevail in prayer. In other words, not to give up praying, not to get tired of praying. There's something called as prevailing or wrestling in prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Jesus says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. So here is Jesus trying to bring out a truth that as God's children, we need to always pray or pray the prevailing prayer wrestle in prayer and not lose heart. There are different kinds of prayers the Bible records. There are just two word prayer, like Jesus would speak, Talita Kumi and the little girl who was dead would arise. He would say Epata, and the man who was deaf and dumb would hear and speak. Short prayer, you know, two word prayers which are powerful. Then there are short prayers. We see the prayer of Jesus before the tomb of Lazarus in John chapter 11. He tells the Father, he thanks him for always the Father hears him. And it was a very brief prayer. And in the end, he cries out Lazarus to come forth and the dead man came forth alive. But the same Bible talks about Jesus spending a night of prayer. Jesus going, waking up early and going to pray. If you would go with me to Hebrews chapter 5, we see Jesus prevailing in prayer. In verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, that is Jesus, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him. Look at the weightage. Look at that power, the depth, the intensity of prevailing prayer. Jesus was, you know, doing vehement cries and he was shedding tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Amazing. So here also Jesus is heard, but after a time of prevailing prayer. So there are different kinds of prayer. There are two word prayer, you know. God bless me is a prayer. Then there are short prayers, which we pray, you know, over a meal that we pray together as a family every day. But then there are also prevailing prayers that you spend hours together. You pour out your heart. So if Jesus did all the three kinds of prayers and he was heard, yes, all these three kinds of prayers do apply to us. And we just can't be saying that 
It's enough that I pray the two-worded prayer. It's enough that I pray the, pray the, the one little a line of prayer. No, we need to learn to pray how to prevail. And I'm going to give you a few pointers of how you can get to that place. You can. I want to encourage you. It is possible. You can get to that place of learning to prevail in prayer that no power of darkness, no powers, whether visible or invisible, can stand in your way. Today, I want to tell that you will progress as you receive these revelations on how to prevail in prayer. Number one, we need faith that does not give up to prevail in prayer. It's important that we need faith. Even in the same Luke chapter 18, Jesus talks about a judge who never feared God nor had respect for men. In the same city, there was a widow who was helpless and her enemy had literally taken over her property or whatever belonged to her. Now she had to go and get justice from the judge. But when she went, the judge never took notice, took care, considered her case. But then she knew one thing, if at all there would ever be an answer, it has to come from the judge as a judgment. And then the enemy has to vacate the plot, has to give back whatever he has taken from her. So what she does is she went again and again and again. That is persistence. And she persisted, she endured, she did not give up because she knew if something had to happen, it had to happen through the judge. And finally, the judge yielded to her persistence and she received what she had lost. You know, Jesus says in Luke chapter 18, in verse 7, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, Will he really find faith on the earth? So that's it. Jesus is saying, your heavenly father, who is not like the unjust judge, he is a loving father, he is a caring father, he is concerned about you. And you might ask, then why should I really persist in prayer? I can just make a small prayer and God can give me the answer. Yes, God can. But there is an enemy who wants to fight against that answer, wants to delay that answer. It's not that because God doesn't want to give you, but the devil wants to stop it, delay it. And that is why you need to pray in faith, not quitting. And I want to tell you, if you do not quit praying, the devil will quit and you will see your breakthrough. And that is the power of prevailing prayer, which is aided by faith. Faith that says, if God cannot do this, I cannot have this. So I have to persist and get it from God. If God is the only way that I can have the answer, then what am I doing without persisting in prayer? I'm getting to pray. I know when I was young, you know, and I was doing my uh, board exams at school, you know, we, uh, two or three of us, you know, gathered together and we wanted to do well in our exams. And, and in the night, we used to gather together in a, friend's house and my friend's sister she also wanted to study well to do her exams to become a doctor so she would put nice tea in a flask and you know keep it there and we used to study across the night and take the tea in between and drink and continue studying and and that's how we were able to fare well by the grace of God and I want to tell you if you can do that for studying, if you can, uh, you know, we hear of people who work overnight shifts, you know, if you can do it at work, why not 
you do it in prayer. You can spend a night of prayer all alone. It is possible. You can spend a day of prayer all alone. It is possible. Pray in faith. And that is how you prevail in prayer. Number two, another truth that we need to know about prevailing in prayer is when we pray, prevail in prayer, the Lord changes our lives and our attitudes. It's important that we allow God to touch our lives and to change our attitudes even when we prevail in prayer. Many times we want to pray prayers asking God, Lord, change my situation. Lord, change my problem. Lord, change my, even the way my boss is behaving. My colleague is behaving. Give me a new job. Lord, change this person, that person. You know, we pray all these prayers. But you know what? God is actually sometimes expecting us, uh, you know, and looking at us and saying, My son, my daughter, if you would only change, if you would change this part of yours, this attitude of yours, if you would let go that sin, if you would let go that hurt that has been caused by somebody, if you would just do this and humble yourself a bit, then I can change anything for you. Genesis chapter 32, he was Jacob uh, being, you know, he was going to be met by his elder brother who once swore to kill him. Esau was coming with 400 men against Jacob and he was afraid. So he sent his family, his servants ahead and he took himself and took himself alone near a river and he was praying all night and the angel of the Lord came. The Bible says that you know, Jacob did what he was not supposed to do as a man. He held on to that angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord wrestled with him even till the morning. Genesis chapter 32. And then uh, the angel of the Lord was saying, let me go because the day is breaking. Jacob would say, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Because Jacob knew there was a curse upon his life that had brought all that pain. In fact, his parents had given him an earthly name. Jacob means a cheater, a traitor, and he was just living up to that name. Sometimes the way some people behave are not because, you know, of them, but it may be a curse that has been spoken over them. So when Jacob prevailed in prayer throughout the night, Finally, the angel of the Lord asks him in verse 27 and 28. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. So God does something. He removes the earthly name, which was a curse, and renames him with a heavenly name, which is which had the name of God inside of it, Israel, which means Prince with God. What a beautiful name. From being cursed to being blessed by the change of a name. It was more than a change of name. It was a change of attitude. It was a change of identity. And you know, Till then, Jacob had been a deceiver. He deceived his father, he deceived his brother, and on and on and on. But ever since God changed his name, his life really changed. And that was the result of prevailing prayer. Now, Jacob took up that new name, new identity, and he wanted to live a new life. And, you know, God brought about a reconciliation with Esau and you know, till now, Jacob was always plundering from people. But now, Jacob told his brother, you can take all these things. You know, he gave him a lot of gifts. The plunderer became a giver. The one who was a taker became a blesser. What a beautiful transformation. And, you know, sometimes 
when we're praying about something long enough, it's time to check ourselves and see if there is something that God really wants me to change in my life. If there is an attitude, am I too tough about something which is not God's will? We need to re-examine ourselves and God is able to clear our mind and, and show us what is right and we can persist in the right thing and God is able to deliver it to us. Thirdly, another important key that really energizes prevailing prayer is holding on to the promises of God in prayer. That gives such an energy to pray with meaning, to pray with purpose. There's something we can always pray using our own words, you know, asking God, Lord, meet my needs. Lord, heal my body. Lord, bless my children. But there's another way of praying, which is actually saying what God has said and literally demanding response, answers for those promises. For example, Lord, you, your word says, by your stripes, I have been healed. It says we were healed, so I have been healed. So I claim that promise and I receive it. Give me the answer. Give me the healing. And we can say that your word says, Lord, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Lord, that's your promise and I come in Jesus' name. Give me what you have promised. And I want to tell you throughout the Bible, almost every saint who saw victory through prayer always quoted from what God had promised them. When Moses prayed, Israel had sinned against God by making the golden calf. Moses prayed, quoting God, that you said you will take these people to that land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, they've done a great mistake, but still you said, and God relented from doing evil. He changed his mind because he had promised. One thing about God is he is a promise-keeping God. And another side of promise is it gives us really the weight to pray, the power and the energy to pray. Even we see King Jehoshaphat when he was surrounded by three armies of three great nations, he quoted and said, Lord, you said to your friend Abraham that you are giving this nation as an inheritance forever. And how can they try to come to drive out us from this place? And God intervened. My friend, there is power when you quote what God has said and then you pray. If you have committed to your children to take them out for a drive or get them some nice ice cream, but you come late from work and they are saying, Mama, Papa, you said that you will do it for us. Won't you respect your own commitment? If, as human beings, we would do that, I know you will. I know I will. I have done it. How much more, our Heavenly Father? Let's look at First Kings chapter 18. There was a great famine, but God tells Elijah in verse 1 to go and present himself to Ahab because God said, I will send rain on the earth. So, Elijah the prophet goes, gathers all the prophets of Baal in Mount Carmel and even the prophets of Asherah and then he prays. Fire comes down to take the sacrifice that Elijah gave because he did it according to the promise of the Lord. That is what verse 36 tells us. But after that, Elijah Again, pray seven times. You would read that from verses 42 to 45. I want to read just a couple of scriptures. Verse 43 says, And said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. 
So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, go again. Verse 44, then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. Look at that. Elijah prevailed in prayer seven times because God had promised him he would send rain from a sky where there was no cloud, from nothing. Before Elijah could finish his prevailing prayer on his knees, the sky was filled with dark clouds. Yes, that's amazing. Because Elijah put his leverage, put his focus, put his honors on the promise of God. If God had said it, he would do it. And I'm going to storm heaven with my prayer. So many examples throughout the Bible. People who trusted in the promise of God and prayed vehemently, prayed with power prayed energetically and they saw breakthroughs my friend today is the day god's encouraging you and i'm here as his servant as your friend in christ to encourage you not to give up heart but begin to pray the prevailing prayer by faith and even as you prevail in prayer allow god to change you where he wants to change you and then pray holding on to the promises of god and when you do that you are going to see answers. Your prayers will prevail. One final thing is we prevail in prayer by being filled with the Holy Spirit and pray in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27. I'm not going to read it for you now, but it says that the Holy Spirit prays within us with groanings that can never be uttered. And that's a powerful way of praying. He prays when we allow, he prays with groanings, you know, prevailing prayer, powerful prayer, prayer that will touch the heart of the Father according to the will of the Father. Because it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, that there are times we do not know what to pray for. Maybe it's concerning your marriage, it's concerning your future, it's concerning a decision that you need to take, concerning a difficult situation. You don't know what to pray. Pray in the Spirit. There's power when we pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. And that brings you to a place of breakthrough. Because when you pray in the Spirit, you pray in the will of God and God will reveal you in due course what His will is. And He will make, you know, verse 28, when we pray in the Spirit, the end result is all things work together for good to those who love God as a result of prevailing in prayer. And that's going to be your testimony too. And God's going to bless you. And I want to pray with you right now and ask God to send a spirit of prayer upon you. It is a spirit. Zachariah, we read that he's a spirit of grace and supplication. He is a spirit of prayer. Shall we pray? I want you to lift your hands to heaven, cross, even across this television screen, and I want to pray. Father, I pray for your child, your son, your daughter, today with whatever need they have. We come to you in prayer. And prayer is such a tool that you've given to us that when we learn to prevail in prayer, that can never be something called as impossibility because impossibility gives way to possibility and mountains depart and ways are made in between those mountains. So I pray in Jesus' name today, send a mighty anointing upon your son, upon your daughter, 
the spirit of prayer to come and rest upon them in a powerful way. That wherever they feel tired, exhausted, feeling like give up, giving up, whether it's a health condition, whether it's a family situation, a financial situation, a struggle that's been they've been facing in life, a marital issue. In Jesus' name, may the spirit of prayer take over your child. That from this day as they begin to pray, may mountains give way in Jesus' name for divine destiny. Lord, may solutions come to problems that have been lingering for a long time. I pray long time problems would cease to exist under this anointing. I pray the anointing that is being released right now will go across this television screen. Touch your children. Bring a breakthrough from the desperate situation and lead them into a place of answers. Thank you, Lord, for your doing it. Thank you for your children are not going to quit, but they're going to win because there is power in prayer. Because we serve a God who answers prayer. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What a joy, my friend. It's such a joy. And I believe God is working on your case. I want you to let us know how this program has been a blessing. You can write to us on email, pastorpaul.prayer at gmail.com or WhatsApp. You can even call those numbers on the screen right now. If you have a prayer request or email your prayer request, I'm going to pray for each of your requests and we're going to reply to that. And next week, another powerful teaching. I know you can't wait, but God's going to bless your week. This will be your week of answers. God bless you.